now we're going to hear from Jill Lieber Knight and Ashley Jackson again. Can we start? I was going to share some stuff first and, and set you up, Ashley. I'll right here. Is that okay? All right. Hi, everyone. It's really fun to be here with you all today. Um, so last uh, election day, last November, I found myself sitting in front of the TV watching the scrolling election results roll in and feeling a little discouraged because my candidate didn't win. And so I did what uh, a lot of people do when they're feeling a little gloomy. They escaped to social media to connect with their tribe. And I found myself on a realtor Facebook group, and you know, there's a lot of them that we're all connected to. And that night, that group was having a conversation about why or why not to get involved with ABOR. And uh, one of my realtor colleagues, Ashley Jackson, was speaking up, as she often does, about why we should you know, get involved and why our voices mattered. Now. You need to know that leading up to this, I had been following Ashley on social media for several years, listening to her stories. And the stories, <laughs> stories, <laughs> listening to her stories. Um, listening to stories sounds Yes. <laughs> and the seeds that she had been planting that night exploded. And I said, I'm going to do it. Now, so Jill. That's me, who has been a member of this board for 14 years and has never been involved with ABOR. Got on and applied for every application. It was like the night before uh, the application deadline. I got online and applied for every committee that remotely maybe I was qualified for because um, I was ready to serve. I've always been ready to serve. I am all about service. It's one of my core values. But for some reason, in this environment, I just didn't feel like my voice mattered until someone reminded me that it did. Jump cut. Three months later, I am sitting in this very boardroom as a new member of the 2019 Diversity Council. I was serving on a committee. <laughs> and I met Robert Wright. You met him earlier today. Um, now, some of you know him. I did not know Robert. Um, so I, I was learning that he has served this board in many capacities for many years. And he is the complete inspiration of the message of we can all, we can probably all repeat it if you know Robert. We can all find time and should find time to serve on our local board at some point. So. I, I was there, and I, I, you know, the amazing Andre was there, who's not here, and that's very sad, but Amy was there, and our rock star, our rock star new CEO, Emily, was there, and some of the, the council members that are here today were in that moot room, and I was meeting them, and it was a passionate, smart, fun group of people, and I was thinking, why the heck did I wait 14 years to get involved, to step out of my brokerage bubble Step out and step up. Stories. Those were just two stories that introduced me to you and a recent journey that I've been through. Now, you need to understand that I have spent my whole life studying the art of storytelling. All of my formal education, I mean all of my formal education and finite degrees are in theater and acting. I have spent more than two decades training, directing, coaching theater students in the art of storytelling. And I have spent my life in the craft of theater. And I'm here to tell you that as humans, we are hardwired to storytell. Stories bring order and structure, and most important, they deliver meaning. What I have found most fascinating in my research about storytelling is that when stories are denied us, we make them up. Example, children whose parents are going through a divorce or their parents are dying from a terminal or life-threatening illness, when they're denied the facts, do you know what they do? They make up a story that often places them at the center of the cause or blame of their parent dying, children 
making up stories. Our brain, you know that our brain creates chemical reactions like dopamine, cortisol, and oxytocin. Those are powerful chemicals that are created by stories. Do you know that stories are our greatest tools in establishing trust, connecting people, creating a feeling of comfort and familiarity? I performed on a TV show for eight years um, in, in the, the children's PBS land, I'm known as Buttermilk Biscuit. Let me tell you, when you, when you spend time on TV, people feel like they know you. They would come up to you. I, I have been proposed to by many a five-year-old boy. <laughs> so, like, stories create familiarity. They're our greatest tools. And so, those of you in this room that are getting ready, getting ready to launch a campaign for leadership here, if you could use a tool like that, utilize a tool that helps people know, like, and trust you for free, why wouldn't you use that? So today I'm going to put on a theater teacher hat, and I am giving you all an assignment. You're not going to complete this today. You can take one and pass it on. There's extra there. So. Now, many of you in this room might already be great writers and great storytellers. These are just creative writing prompts to give you something to stir your imagination, to daydream about your unique story. One, do you remember a time when you felt that your contribution made a difference in someone's life? Two, was there an event in your life that taught you the importance of service? Three. Was there a person in your life that encouraged you and helped you learn that your voice mattered and you had something to share? My story today that I shared about Ashley, she was a person in my life that helped me realize that my voice mattered. So go home. Take some time to think about this. If you're running, take time to think about your story. I'm here to remind you that stories are the easiest but most powerful weapon in your arsenal for branding and campaigning. Stories show people, show people your resume. We realtors love to list, you know, our achievements, awards, and designations. I fall victim to that sometimes as well. But when you can show somebody what you're about and what you're passionate about, that message sticks. So please, please, when you're sort of crafting and daydreaming about running and campaigning and spreading your message, don't forget that stories, if they're denied in your campaign, your audience is going to make one up for you. Do you hear that? Your audience will make one up for you if you don't tell your story. So be the author of your story. Take time to daydream about it. Know that this takes time. This is not a quick thing. Someone who has spent years in theater, I know that it, it takes time to sit and daydream and think and write and journal and talk to people. And then once you find some stories that really capture who you are, write them down. Find short form, long form ways and share them in multiple form formats and forums online, offline, when, when uh, networking at events, share them over and over and over again. I am so glad you understand that link right here. <laughs> she shared her story multiple times, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a super like, organ you know, it was just a persistent, authentic sharing of stories online. And every time I met her at social events, and she was planting little seeds. And so by the time I got to that voting, I was like, oh, I feel like I know Ashley. She, I'm connected to her. I feel like I understand her. And I am so grateful that you were persistent and told your authentic story once, twice, three times, 10 times, 20 times. So everyone, <laughs> Miss Ashley Jackson. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Wow, okay, I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. So what Jill may not remember is that she was the president of her neighborhood association on one side of 35, and I was the president of the neighborhood association on the other side of 35, like way back 10 years ago. <laughs> it's a long time ago, and my kids loved her show. They're, <laughs> I don't think they asked you for marriage, but probably they would have. You know, we only went to one Hard last to remember all five Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't really prepare a whole lot for this section, but what she's talking about is how I share my authentic self a lot on social media. <laughs> Maybe too much. Uh, people have said, oh, okay, Ashley, okay. But I am by my very nature incapable of not being who I am. I will always just be who I am. And that honesty and that transparency comes through and what I post on specifically Facebook and, and Instagram where I am talking about politics because that's my passion, right? That's something that I'm deeply into and have been since I was a kid. I grew up reading the Austin American Statesman every single morning well, before I got ready for school since probably it was eight or nine every day, which is kind of how I know how I have deep knowledge of Austin. Um, so I think we could, if we wanted, to talk about maybe some tips and tricks on how you could maybe leverage your campaign with social media. Does anyone want to talk about that? Raise your hands. You want to get into that? Um, so that I ran as a nominee in 2017. Uh, it was a rough year, you might remember. None of us made it. And then when I ran in 2018, <laughs> not to discourage you, but those were special circumstances. Um, when I ran in 2018, I simply missed a deadline. Um, and because I was still thinking about it because 2017 was kind of rough y'all and I, I had to do some deep soul searching and talk to my family about making sure this was the right fit for us you know that's, that's something that you definitely want to consider doing too um, so in 2018 part of what I did a little bit differently was I um, made sure I had been participating in the real estate forums and you, there's a whole smattering of them some of them are awesome some of them not so much. <laughs> I stay out of those. In fact, left those. I don't love them. Um, but you probably see me out there. So a lot of realtors know who I am. Uh, I also was a realty Austin for three years, and so a lot of the agents there uh, knew who I was, and I think that that really helped. So you may want to find yourselves kind of participating a little bit more in some of the groups on Facebook, uh, maybe going to some sales meetings. Just get to know the members and talk to them and be upfront about your candidacy, candidacy and your passion and why you want to serve and listen to what they have to say and shake some hands. Press the flesh. <laughs> so briefly, back when Austin's uh, city council changed its representation and we went to the 110 um, districts, I was a campaign manager for someone in District 1, which had a ton of candidates. And that's something that we talked about a lot. I think he put thousands of miles on his shoes, walking the block and pressing the flesh and meeting people. And that, I think that's one way to really get yourselves out there and make sure that you're kind of known among the membership. I think that it really helps. Um, any other questions about that? Any questions about that? Well, I think I'll just say, um, so, the, so voting is open for a week in September. Right. And so your goal is to ask people to vote for you. Yeah. That's, I mean, you're it's, simply, it's, it's a legit you election. Shy about it. Yeah, it's a, it's a real election. Mm -hmm. And so that's your goal. Is, and luckily, right now, that is a while down the road. So you've so got, you've got plenty time. Of time to get out there and meet people and um, go to all the things and all that. There's a lot of opportunities here at Acor to your monthly forums. That's right. So, yep. I mean, there, there's Wear your name tag. I do this religiously now. Everywhere I go, if I'm there as a board member, I want people to know that, hey, there's a board member here and it's me. Um, so people know who you are. But I, for me, I have a photographic memory. You tell me things, I'm going to forget them immediately. But if I read it or see it, I will absolutely remember it. So wear your name tag so that people see your name and associate that with your face and, and the bio that's going to go out about you when we put the slate forward. And just to you know keep reminding people who you are. Uh, it's really good advice. Anything else? I'm curious how many of our board members uh, voted in the last election? Um, what we, we had, uh, I think it was 13%. Yeah, my goal was right. to beat Houston. Houston had 11% mm -hmm. turnout. So we have 13,000 members. Only about 30% are very active sellers. So it's, you know, so if you think about 70% of our membership 
aren't super active. Maybe they sell one house a year. There might be a flipper yeah, or developer. Right. So, yeah. so of the, you know, so 13% sounds low. It's actually not that bad for, for <laughs> this association <laughs> or for the city yeah. election for them. Really um, so yeah, so it's, right? um, yeah, 13% or so, so whatever that comes out to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, which I, I think is pretty good. So last year I sent an email to everybody, which I hesitated to do. How many emails a day do we get, y'all? <laughs> so many emails. <laughs> but I did it towards the end of the election because I wanted to stay fresh on everybody's mind, right? Um, I did post, uh, I, I made the ask. You want to make the ask, right? We are salespeople, we know we got to make the ask. Ask for someone's vote, ask for their support directly. When I posted in some of the groups, I was asking for support. And I, I did that in 2018, I didn't do it in 2017. Maybe things would have been different, I don't know. Um, but that, I think that definitely worked. And then people would ask me questions too. And I actually tried to hold like AMA, like Reddit has, ask me anything. I actually did a few sessions of that um, and stayed online to answer questions too. Yes. Irma, you had a question. Oh, <laughs> jump in when you remember. I mean, I, I do think it's important to be consistent, persistent. Okay. Don't assume that if you, if you work on a great story that you're going to share, and if you're scared to tell a story, always get someone to interview you. That's yes. great sort of like coaching. I do a lot of video work and video coaching. So if you're scared to just put up that Facebook law, you know, like get someone to, to talk and, and visit with you about what you're passionate about. But be persistent posted many, many times. We're just mm -hmm. getting more and more distracted socially mm -hmm. online. So just keep doing it and know that once um, you send it out there, you might have to post it several times and share it and get other people to share it. Yes. So my question is, uh, when, the email distribution list, where did you obtain that? What, 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 what was the makeup of it and where did you obtain it? Um, a, a broker gave it to me. Abor does not supply emails. Um, I'm assuming that my broker who used it probably for recruiting purposes got it from Trek. I don't know. I honestly am not sure, but maybe so, ask yeah, the broker. So any, it was to any of, uh, you can it? download all the email addresses of all the realtors from Trek. Boom. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> but, uh, no, you're going to have to sort them and take all yeah. the Houston and Dallas and San Antonio ones out. and ah. You're going to have to do some sorting. Okay. But not all licensees from Trek are realtors. So yeah, yeah, might as well. right. Some could be assistants. Yeah, yeah. And I had had my list was old. <laughs> my list was super old. So <laughs> I got some bounce backs on it. But, you know, um, I also kind of felt like that was a last resort. In the previous election, some members were not real thrilled that they got emails from the candidates at that time. So just keep that in mind. Well, that's something that you're going to come across in campaigning yes. no matter what. You <laughs> can't make everybody happy. Yes, right. So yep. that's cool. They, yeah. they had a reaction? Great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> they saw your name, right? Yeah. Anything else? So I will close on something that they say at Realty Austin a lot that I love, which is your vibe attracts your tribe, right? That's one of my favorite Realty Austin sayings. So be who you are. Be out there. Be yourself, meet some people, shake some hands, and the rest will happen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.